Well, here we are. Here we are. Mary Mags, morning prayer. So just wait for a few people to jump on. Oh. Weirdly, it's not showing me anyone. So hopefully, hopefully. Morning, Virginia. How are you, lovely? Nice to see you. This is good. Lisa, hi. Wendy, this is good. Oh goodness, I can see everyone upside. This is great. This is really good. So I don't know how you're doing. Sun is shining. This is great. Hi, Carrick. Jane, Adrian, nice to see you. This is good. This is really good. Apparently the weather's going to get even better. I don't know how you guys are doing this week. Pauline, nice to see you. Gary, hi mate. This is good. Al. Nancy! Hello, Nancy! Anne. Ali, this is good. This is great. Good, we'll just wait a few moments, obviously, for more people to hop on. Um, I don't know how your week's been. Oh my goodness. Hi, Anne. Nice to see you from sunny Southampton. This is good. This is great. You're joining us. Brilliant. It's, there's quite a few people joining us uh, who are not normally at St. Mag's. This is great. You know, it's such a great thing. I don't know. I found it such a blessing. Uh, Magdalena, I don't know you, but you're very welcome. Diana, this is good. This is good. So we're, we're carrying on. We're doing, um, we're following on Peter Grieg's book, How to Pray. So these morning devotions and evening devotions are, have been a really great thing. Hi, Petrina. How are you, lovely? Um, have been a really great thing and encouragement uh, during lockdown. I know that. Um, I, I personally found them really, really helpful. It's been such a blessing what Sam and Joe have sort of put in place. It's been really, really good. Really, really enjoyed yours, Petrina. It's been great. It's really good. Um, really good. So um, we are going to be looking at morning, um, knowing your authority. Um, so we'll just wait for a few more bods. Um, it's not really showing me how many people are on here, which is good. So I'm just getting the um, comments up the side, which is good. Uh, I've had uh, quite a, a, oh my goodness, a full on week. I'm very grateful I'm still working. I work as a teacher. For people who don't know me, my name is Martin, Martin Harris, and uh, I'm just one of the uh, congregation. Um, I've been at MAGS probably about seven years, and um, Sam asked me whether I'd do the odd uh, devotional, which I'm more than happy to do. Um, it's such a privilege. Uh, you know, really, really love what the church is doing. It's great. Hi, Emma. This is nice. Uh, this is good. Lots of people jumping on. This is really good. So, um, yeah, so I'm really chuffed today because it is half term. So I have had such a busy, busy old week. It's been really, um, really busy, busy this week. And um, at the club, uh, I run um, I run a theatre company, Unleash Theatre Company, which um, an Unleash Community Drama is basically a drama group for folk who are perhaps, you know, in, in rehab or um, in recovery uh, or perhaps, you know, um, have issues. But it's a lovely inspirational group. And we've been running this group on a, a, a Thursday morning. And we still run it online. So if you want to jump on and see some drama, live action, really interactive, an hour and a half of fun on Thursday mornings, uh, that's at the Unleashed um, Theatre Company page. But uh, this week's been um, Mental Health Week, and I think it really fits in well. Uh, Mental Health Awareness Week, it really fits in well. So on Thursday, we were talking a lot about mental health and, um, you know, struggles that people have. And I think particularly this time of lockdown, there are a lot of people struggling with just feeling, uh, you know, stuck in, uh, not seeing their, their loved ones, uh, worried about people who are ill. Lots of things going on in these um, difficult times. Um, and yet, you know, isn't it great to think that actually things are easing up, that, you know, the um, we've got through the got through the big curve and uh, hopefully things are e easing up, which is great. So we are going to be looking at uh, knowing your authority. Um, so how are we doing? Yeah, let's make a start. So we're going to pause and we're just going to get ready for prayer. So um, as I enter prayer now, I want to pause and be still. And uh, we're just going to breathe slowly. Uh, we do this a lot with the club. I do it a lot with my singing pupils. Just breathing in. So we're just going to breathe in through your nose and then breathe out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose. 
breathe out. And this just calms your body, gets us ready to centre our scattered senses upon the presence of God. So as I draw, draw near to you, God, would you draw near to me? Teach me to pray. May I know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly and follow thee more nearly day by day. So we're going to start with some rejoicing, okay? I rejoice today in God's power and faithfulness. Joining in the ancient praise of all God's people in the words of Psalm 89. So this is from Psalm 89. Great words. Oh my goodness. Psalm 89 verses 8 to 9. O Lord God of heaven's armies, where is there anyone as mighty as you, O Lord? You are entirely faithful. You rule the oceans you subdue their storm-tossed waves. So today we're going to reflect on what God has done. And uh, not only did he raise Jesus from the dead, but he also enthroned him as high king over all creation. So these, this is a passage from Ephesians, Ephesians 1 verses 20 to 22. God raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority power and dominion and every name that is invoked not only in the present age but also in the one to come and this is the bit god raised us up with christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in christ jesus god raises us up with christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in christ jesus okay so a little quote here from the patriarch Athenagoras, who said, the resurrection is not the resuscitation of a body, the rehabilitation of a body. It is the beginning of the transfiguration of the world. Christ's resurrection was the start of God's new creation, but it didn't stop with Jesus. As Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5, which we're going to look at, this is, this is a fab passage. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. God's wonderful idea is to transform the world through transformed people. God wants me to live in the authority I have already received in Christ. That means that I am no longer sitting in a world of troubles looking up to God for help. Rather, I am seated with Christ looking down at the same vantage point. Now, guys, I'm going to read this again because this is just such a fair passage. Um, so this is this is from 2 Corinthians 5. OK. Um, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God has reconciled the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sin against him. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Well, now that is such a fab passage because basically what it's saying is it's saying that actually the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in us. You know, you know it says that we have become if we're seated with Christ as his children. Um, I've got an analogy here, which I want to just show you because it's all about the authority that we have. Today, we're thinking about the authority that we have in Christ, that when we get saved, we suddenly are brought into his family and we have the same authority, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Uh, this is quite an old an um, analogy, but um, I think it might help. Um, this is a £20 note, right? OK, this is a real value. OK, can you see that's got the Queen's head on one side? On the other side, it's got an artist, Turner. I love it. Look, Turner. But this is worth, okay, this is worth 20 quid. I could go into a shop, okay, and with the authority given to me by this piece of uh, paper, I could buy what I like to buy in lockdown, which is basically Battenberg, peanuts, getting told off by my wife for buying all this rubbish, you know, but, you know, comfort eating and stuff. But you can go into a shop and you can, you can spend this, okay, with... Um, you know, 20 quid. Now, look, I can screw it up. I can, I can stamp on it. I can roll it in the mud. I can roll it in the mud. 
I could screw it up like that, okay? And it doesn't change its value. It doesn't change its value. And that is how God looks at us. When we're brought into his kingdom, when we make a confession of faith, okay, it's like we have the same authority as a, as a, as a banknote, okay? And it doesn't matter what happens to us. It doesn't matter, you know, sometimes we feel crushed, screwed up, sometimes, you know, in the mud, in the dirt. In terms of how God views us, we are of real value. You know, whatever you do to a 20 pound note, you can screw it up, you can really, you know, roll it in the mud, you know, stamp on it, okay? And it is still of value. And that is how God looks at us, you know? Um, last week we were talking about um, Mental Health Awareness Week. And, um, you know, for a lot of people, you know, mental health, is a really big struggle for a lot of people. You know, in this country, one in four people will struggle with mental health at some point in their life. And that includes Christians, that includes Christians. And I think this is what I'd like to encourage you with this morning, is that we have authority. We have authority, we can stand on the power of God and we can we, we know that we have God's Holy Spirit working in us. And it, it's not conditional on how we feel. It's not conditional on whether we're nice, bright, shiny, um, 20 pound note that's come straight out the bank. You know, it could be crushed, it could be um, screwed up, it could be thrown in the mud. It is still of value. And that is how God sees us. That actually the authority we have is not, is not, it's not conditional on how we feel. Okay. But I think what this passage is really good, it's telling us that actually the authority that we have is in Christ. It's not in ourselves. And I think sometimes people think you've got to be in a certain position to be used by God or, you know, God can only use you if you've got all your acts together. You know, you've got all your ducks in a row. You, you know, you're a really together person. No, it's through grace. You know, there is no condemnation for those in Christ that because once we've once we've once we've asked Jesus into our life, then we have. Uh, there's no condemnation, you know, and we have that same authority that raised Jesus from the dead at work in us. That's what this passage says. That's what this passage says, that we are now his ambassadors and that God has transformed us so that we might be transforming to our communities, the people around us. We might be ambassadors for him uh, around us. So listen, maybe, you know, Mental Health Week, perhaps you've been feeling a little bit like this. Perhaps, you know, in lockdown, you're feeling a little bit like that. That does not mean that you are not of value. You are of real value and God can use you. You could still go into a shop and this would be able to, you know, redeem those Battenbergs and those peanuts. OK, is that great? Isn't that fantastic? Such a fantastic thought. But, you know, um, that's that's how it is. So that that is a fantastic verse. So. Oh, hang on. What's going on here? OK, so now we're going to come uh, back to prayer. OK. And um, we're just going to be quiet for a moment. So we're just going to be quiet for a moment. And um, we're just going to contemplate on that, that, that amazing verse, actually. Lord, I ask that I might see my world from your perspective. That I may not become anxious whenever I encounter difficulties, but rather know that you have already raised me up, not just to stand on mountains, but to sit in high places, high heavenly places. So let's be quiet for a moment. Lord, I ask for people I know who are facing trouble right now. May your kingdom come. Your will be done. Lord, may things be put right and may they experience your spirit of peace and your joy. So we're just going to return to that passage. As I return to the passage, I open my ears to hear your word and my heart to yield to you once again. So we're going to yield now to the Lord. 
God raised Jesus from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. When I pray, I don't always need to ask God to do things for me. Rather knowing that I'm seated with Christ, my prayer becomes an act by which I exercise the authority I have. Peter Grieg, he writes, we are sons and daughters of the king, commissioned to rule and reign by his side. And what he's saying here is that actually when we come to God, sometimes we don't have to actually ask him for anything. Um, you know, I've been one of the things I've really struggled with. I haven't had a particularly brilliant week, if I'm honest. I've had quite a, quite a, quite a rough week. Um, but um, one of the things I've really struggled with was um, not seeing my little granddaughter and um, my son, his wife, I've really, really struggle with that. Um, and we were contemplating, my wife and I, about, um, you know, uh, our little granddaughter looks so much like my son. And when he was young, when, when my, both my kids were young, sometimes just sitting with them and not saying anything and just being with them, oh my gosh, you know, that was just enough. I used to look at my little lad, Joe, and he was a really good looking little kid. And I used to think to myself, my goodness, I can't believe I'm so lucky to have such a little kid like this. You know, I just love you so much. And he couldn't say anything. And my little granddaughter, she's at that same stage now. She can't speak, you know, she's only eight, eight months old. And um, she, you know, she, she re relies on everything from her parents, um, completely helpless. And yet, you know, they're surrounding her with love and uh, she's such a poppet, you know, really miss her. But just being in her presence, us as the grandparent and as, a, uh, you know, as seeing my son as a lovely dad now, uh, just seeing them with him, uh, with her, um, just being, just being. That's what um, this is. This is about. It's about, you know, it's the same with God. He looks at us with all our faults, with all our failings, with all our. Perhaps, you know, we're a bit disobedient, you know, stuff like that. Um, and he loves us because we've been brought into his kingdom and we have been called his children. I remember when I was um, when I was first saved, I really uh, and I still do it. I still still do it. I am. Um, I, I, I learned a lot of scripture um, so I could quote it to myself because there are times when I felt life was really hard and found it really hard. And so I still do it. You know, I, I learned scripture, just like little lines, one line that's like, you know, I am a new creation. Uh, there, I, I am a new creation. I'm a child of the living God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon that's fashioned against me will succeed. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And through the hard times, just confessing that word of God, you know, I am a new creation. The same same power that's work, that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in me. No weapon that's fashioned against me will succeed. And just quoting stuff like that, oh my gosh, really helped. So um, so we're going to uh, pray uh, a prayer of yielding. I just want to see if there are any, um, also, if there are, if there are any, uh, Chase, <laughs> ducks have run away. <laughs> uh, chasing mine, quack, quack. <laughs> God is walking with me every moment of it. This is good. I totally agree. This is good. OK, so, guys, we're going to just pray this prayer of yielding and then going to be silent. OK, and then and then, then we'll close. So, Lord, today I yield to your sovereignty, knowing that as I do so, you call me to sit with you in a place of authority. Not surrendering, surrendering to be less than who I truly am in Christ. Today, I stand on God's promise in Luke 10, 19. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Isn't it great the authority we have in Christ. Great the authority we have in Christ. Fantastic. So we're just going to close now, guys. Father, help me to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. 
Amen. So guys, that's it. Hope you have a great day. Half term. So excited. It's half term. Haven't got to work. Thank the Lord. It's so good. Right. Let me see here. Uh, all right. Love them more than any other person. This is good. Snorkel maiden. That's lovely. That's really great. Um, okay. So guys, listen, uh, enjoy the rest of the time. Um, have a nice weekend. And um, I think I'm on again next week. So um, I'll see you then. But in the meantime, have a lovely bank holiday and um, God bless you.